hello, hello there, and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home, where we grow, 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 grow together. Well, today is Sunday, and it is the last Sunday of July. And I just want to take you around the garden and let us do our Sunday walkabout. There were so many good things to show you. And so I hope that you will just enjoy the walk. I did the walk in the morning, early in the morning when it was cool and that everything was calm so that you can have a wonderful experience with me in the garden. So let's walk around and see what is happening in my garden, Catherine's garden. Good morning and welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home. And today is the last Sunday in the month of July. The last Sunday. And so many things are blooming and the colors just so rich here on my deck that I just had to show it off here and just let you see the beauty that I look out on when I step out into my garden area. It is just so beautiful. But what I really want to show you this morning uh, before we walk around the garden um, is my basil. I planted seeds, this, these basil seeds from the American Seed Company. I got this packet from the Dollar Tree and it's four for a dollar. And I filled this container right here with soil and planted a pack of these seeds in this container and look what it produced. All of this beautiful basil and you know that each one is a basil plant so if I were to separate the basil here I would have multiple plants but what I'm going to do later on uh, as they continue to grow and mature is to divide up this container of basil so that I can have sweet basil throughout the month of August and into September and possibly uh, save some of this basil even either making pesto or just drying it for teas. I love basil in tea. Have you ever put basil in your tea? And right here I have cinnamon basil and I have been using the cinnamon basil for tea and I've added it with my mints. It has been delicious. I got the seeds from the uh, Baker Creek Seed Company and I had bought the seeds like two years ago. I planted some last year and I saved some and then I used the last of the seeds this year to fill this container and I also filled another container as well with seeds and I found that this one the seeds are so tiny it's amazing how tiny the seeds are I filled the, this container with seeds and a lot of the seeds spilled out and so I have a lot of, of little plants plants in this one but this one here only a few seeds were left and so this is actually the better way to grow the basil because you can see that the basil plants have more room to grow and the plants are much more larger but I don't mind for right now because it's just a beautiful display when I come out or look out the window this is what I see uh, on the table here this uh, display of basil I wanted to share this with you because it smells fantastic it tastes delicious and it's great 
basil leaves are great for teas, great on in salads, with pizza, whatever. Your, your cooking will be uh, taken to a new level with basil. Yeah. So I just love that and I wanted to share my success and like continuing success. This is what I'm going to be enjoying for the month of August into the rest of the season. And I have another edible right here, which today, this morning, looks extremely more beautiful than it did yesterday. So I have to show it off. And that is the nasturtium. Check out the beautiful flowers in the nasturtium. This is edible. The nasturtium flowers are edible and great in salads, as well as the leaves. The leaves have a sort of peppery flavor. And uh, I also have orange ones, plain orange here. And this one, I love this one, with this flower, with the, it's almost like somebody painted this uh, flower. Absolutely beautiful. Yep, so that's what I want to share with you as we walk around the deck. My beautiful nasturtium that I grew from seed as well. This morning, this last Sunday in July, I want to take you around for a garden tour, a full garden tour. We're going to walk around and I'm going to show you what we've been doing in all of the beds and just give you a sense of what Catherine's Garden and Home looks like. If you're new to the channel, I am in the Northeast in the United States of America, the Boston area. I am a city dweller. My garden is styled as an English cottage style garden. I have different sections, some that are under massive trees, like what you see here. And uh, I also have my sunny spots too, where I grow my vegetables and flowers. So welcome to Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together. This is my most favorite time of the day, early in the morning. It's around six o'clock in the morning and it is a cool morning. It's about 63 degrees here in my garden. And the sun isn't fully up yet so that you can get a really good look at my garden and the flowers and the combinations that I have placed together in the beds. Right now, this is one of my most favorite sections of the garden. I truly love how it has all come together with the caladiums. And I place the roses, rose pots <laughs> in the beds And it is just fooling out so beautifully. This is the best this bed has ever looked since I've been gardening. And I love how each plant is just placed perfectly.
So let us walk through the garden. I'm going to do this really quick. <laughs> because there's just so much to see. I decided to put this canner here in the center of the garden because as you can see, it is starting to develop its flower heads. Look at that. That is so exciting. I got this canner from Costco about four years ago, and I've been saving the, the canner rhizomes. And this year, uh, this year, this is what is left, and it's doing so well here. I can't wait to show you the flower when it's in full bloom. But in the meantime, you can see the process here, how it starts off like this. And then it's going to have full color. And I love this color too, here in the center of the garden because it's going to match that red is going to match the red that you see there with the impatience over here i placed some of my caladiums which i think the name is cardinal and we can see why it's called cardinal because of those red leaves, the interior of the leaves being so red and beautiful. And then with the hosta, the impatience just works really well against the backdrop of the green. Right now, these yellow flowers, daisy-like flowers, have um, opened up. And I really love how it is filling this space and working so well with the hostas and also the impatients. I love my container here that's surrounded by hostas. Inside of the container are my kale plants. I planted the kale from seed. The seeds were from the plants that I had uh, allowed to go to flower in my vegetable garden kitchen garden area and I just pop the seeds in sometime in March and I ended up getting this kale. I also have marigolds and that marigold plant is from seed that I saved from last year as well and it is flowering it is flowering I also put in some nasturtiums and also some impatience. And this is the result. I think this is the better side. It looks good in this pot and along with the backdrop of the yellow flowers there and the impatience in the border behind it. 
I think this came out pretty nice. is my fig tree and it has really taken off again this year it is looking so good and I do have figs on it soon these figs will be mature and I'll be able to eat them I'm excited about that I love fresh figs and especially because I'm getting it from my own garden. It has really expanded here this year. I think that this year has been a great year. This spring was mild and the tender, more tender plants that I've had in the garden, like the figs and the hydrangeas, they were able to grow and to also uh, to flower and, and fruit. And so that's one of the benefits of this year's uh, beautiful spring, rainy spring at that, that the plants are flourishing now in my garden, especially this fig tree. It looks more like a shrub at this point, but yeah, we'll still call it a fig tree. I am just so pleased with my kitchen garden area. The tomatoes are coming in. And looking so good. I have been picking them. I just also decided to cut back some of the leaves so that they can put more energy into developing tomatoes. I think it's working because I see new growth all throughout this area. I have the yellow flowers again here in this section by the tomatoes and the other vegetables. And you should see this um, collection of flowers here between the bee balm and these yellow flowers. The bees and the pollinators just love it which is great because they now are going to pollinate my tomato plants. Therefore, I should have a really good harvest in August here of tomatoes. I just love these 100s. That's what this is. It's very prolific, as you can see. I think it's about two plants that I have here. And I'm going to have tomatoes for a while. This style tomato, these sweet 100s are great for salads. As I enter in to this area, you will see my collard greens here that I planted. 
I am so pleased to see how they are growing because in in the spring, early spring when I planted them and they were shrouded by other collard greens that I had from last year. That's these stems that you see here. And they went to flower and I allowed them to go to seed. And so that's what you're seeing here are seedlings because then I sprinkle some of the seeds here. Now these plants I got from a, gar a gardener friend of mine who sells seedlings and I planted them in in the spring. They had been nibbled on and eaten by slugs and bugs. I then kept let them stay there and they have revived. And now I'm going to have some beautiful kale plants that will take me into the winter. And last winter, this, these plants right here lasted through the winter. My husband ate the leaves. You can see this is from this one right here. My husband would gather the leaves and we would add them to our cooking. He would layer the pan with the leaves and then place the fish or salmon or whatever that he was cooking on top of them and then we would bake it, them, bake the fish, especially the fish, bake the fish. And it was delicious. And we also was able to get a taste of summer during the winter because kale lasts through the winter it did very well so i am so pleased with this in this kitchen garden area i also have mint and lemon balm growing there some more of the tomatoes And this is the kale. I grew this kale from seed, the seed that I saved before, the same kale that I planted in the, in the pot. Um, this is some of the seeds here. And look at how healthy they are. Absolutely beautiful. And in this area too, I have the corn and some more collard greens. The purple plants that you see, that's purple perilla, which is edible. They use purple perilla in Asian cuisine to make sushi leaves, sushi. They use the leaves with creating um, sushi. And I am so pleased with my dinosaur kale. I have been enjoying this in salads. And I also have peppers back there. And my corn. I also have here okra, spineless, crimson spineless okra and they are about to form some okra pods. Now this that you see here, this is carrot. Carrot flowers, I just love the flowers. And I allow them just to seed in and they just come back. I love this arrangement. It's so natural, beautiful. 
the garden is full and I like it that way because with the heat the soil doesn't dry out and everything stays lush I also have here onions that are growing that I planted in the spring and they are wonderful I've been eating the onions and adding them to my salads this is my kitchen garden area filled with herbs and vegetables and also I have a plum tree here golden plum tree it's, that's what they're called golden plums and this year it's filled with plums I am so thankful because um, in the past I haven't been able to get a lot of plums so I'm just hoping that the plums will stay on the tree so that I will be able to enjoy the plums because these plums are very, very sweet. This section is the front of my garden, the front side garden. I call this my jewel garden area. Uh, it has just been blooming. The Cleome, look at this. I planted the Cleome from seed. I started them from seed. And this is from last year. <laughs> they self-sowed. And now this is what I have. This something about volunteer plants. They always look more healthier than the ones that are sowed initially. So these are volunteers from last year that I had sown here in this spot. Then as far as Perennials concern, this bee bomb. Oh, this has been so beautiful. And now I have flowering. The beautiful purple phlox. I think this just looks very nice. I think the bird agrees too as well. I placed here my elephant ears in this section and I think it was a good move. I love, I love zinnias. I love these zinnias here. When the zinnias continue to grow out, it's gonna fill up this space. I love it with the rose. This is Mother of Pearl Rose. It's looking really good. I have the Madonna Lily opening up.
these cosmos are volunteers. <laughs> they just keep, they're just returning every year and then self sowing here in the garden. I just leave them and just cut them back. This is my hydrangea. Little limelight. I also have mountain mint that I grew from seed. Spirea. Double play candy corn spirea. Absolutely beautiful. And then I have my oak leaf hydrangea here. Backed by these yellow flowers for now. I love the oak leaf hydrangea. Then here is my David Austin Rose, Evelyn. She's doing very well. I do love this box filled with strawberry plants. My son made this box for me and I had some strawberry plants that had uh, made runners and I stuck, stuck the runners in the box with some tulip bulbs and the tulips are finished but the strawberry plants are doing well. I did actually get some strawberries. I flanked it here with zinnia plants so I'm waiting for the zinnias to open. That's going to be very pretty but in the meantime I love the green and I love the textures. And this is a boxwood, beauty boxwood, I believe. And I have my rose bush here, which is about to open soon. But in the meantime, I just really like the different textures here. Of course, I need to weed, but I just, I like how it looks. This is the other side of this border. And we have another spirea. This is candy corn, not double. <laughs> We're just playing candy corn and it's pretty. I have sedum and I planted some zinnias here. I also have four o'clocks in this space too. I'm waiting to see them open. I know it's going to be beautiful. I also have some Kuyomi here. Now these I seeded this year. I love the color, the purple. As you can tell, they're not as big as the ones that so seeded. But they're still beautiful. And I love it with this rose. This rose is Midnight. Midnight, I think is the name of it. I got it from Rose. And it is gorgeous. In this pot, I have some more zinnias that will be opening up. And this plant right here, that is my perennial hibiscus. 
which will be flowering soon. I have two different plants and I am so excited. Um, for August, this is what we're looking forward to. I also have a Rose of Sharon there that will be flowering soon as well. My hydrangea, I propagated that hydrangea. There's two hydrangea shrubs. I propagated them, and they're called um, Bridal Bouquet. It's part of the Endless Summer. Mm -hmm. During those hot days that we had in the 90s, the blooms got a little scorched, but it seems like it has rebloomed a little bit. That's the blue ones that you see there. And they're looking a little more fresh. This is going to be a beautiful display. Yeah. Wait until those hibiscus open up. Mm. It's going to fill in that spot real well. But in the meantime, this is the before and you will have the after. So make sure you come back and join me here at Catherine's Garden at home. And then this rose is my Pinkabell rose. It is starting another flush of roses, of fresh greenery, look at that. Could you imagine it filled with roses, the hibiscus? the um, hydrangea with the zinnias. Oh, this corner is going to be gorgeous. I could just see it in my mind. But in the meantime, it's still very beautiful. This is the other side of the garden. And it continues to flourish the corn. You know, I'm so impressed with pumpkin. I just love pumpkin leaves. Man, isn't this beautiful? I couldn't have designed it any better myself. And nature has done this all by itself. Isn't it beautiful? And then I have my naturalistic side, and the shrubs are doing well. Now, my knockout roses are starting to bloom. We're going to have another display of roses here. It's going to be really pretty. My sunflowers, they're still blooming. The flower heads are a little smaller, but still beautiful. This has definitely been the highlight of this upper garden, which I call my naturalistic garden. And now they have the yellow flowers. Did you end them? There's a little surprise here. Mm. 
my seniors. Wow. I had to plant them in a pot because they were getting overwhelmed by all of the other things. But they definitely showed up this morning. I planted some butternut squash here and they are about to take off. And here's my jalapeno peppers. I also have some other green peppers here. But what is really impressive is my hedge of kale, curly kale, from seed that I grew in the spring. And I just uh, took them from the kitchen garden area and brought them over here and lined this front area with the kale. And look at that. I just love how they're growing with the peppers. And it's so delicious. I've been making salads with them, putting in them in my cooking. Just beautiful. Finally, my zucchini. And I know I have some zucchini growing in here. At least I did. Yes. There they are. saying goodbye to July. This is the last Sunday walkthrough for the month of July. And if you like what you see, please come on back to Catherine's Garden and Home where we grow, 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 grow together. And how can you come back? By just hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell for more videos. And you will be ready for a beautiful time with me here in my garden. And you'll be able to see all of the different changes. So thank you for walking with me in the garden. As you can see, the sun is up, nice and bright.
us come back and join me here at Catherine's Garden and Home. Thank you for joining me here at Catherine's Garden and Home. And if you like what you saw, why don't you subscribe for more videos so that you can be a part of my growing community here where we share and enjoy the garden. I would love to have you become a part of this growing community here at Catherine's Garden and Home. So hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell for more videos because there's still a lot more summer to go and a lot more in this season.